Hi, it's Dwyer. It's April the 2nd, 2018. Gamblersadvisory.com, free site. DwyerVIP.com, free site. Let's talk about the current state of the heavyweight division. But first, remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now let's have a serious talk. Understand, we don't have to agree on anything, right? I'm going to tell you what I think. You can tell the world what you think in the comment section to the video, right? But let's try to get by all the nationalism. You have an unbeaten British heavyweight champion who holds more than one belt. We call that unified. You have an unbeaten American heavyweight champion, right? You also have a Spanish world heavyweight champion. Don't forget Manuel Char, who owns the WBA heavyweight title. <coughs> well, let's just say this. From this seat, the heavyweight division is wide open right this is not the mid 1980s and Mike Tyson this is not the mid 1960s and Muhammad Ali right in my opinion it's not the late 90s and Lennox Lewis what you have here are guys fighting each other trying to figure it out I don't see the surefire bet. I don't see the heavyweight champ who you say, okay, there's him and then there's everyone else. What I want people to do is to remember the odds and remember the expectations going into Joshua's fight against Joseph Parker. Understand, you had Heavyweight contenders like Dylan White, a guy who got stopped early by Joshua, talking about how Joshua was going to smash Parker to bits. Right? On the Parker side of the play, Parker was a greater than 5 to 1 underdog. Well, what I want people to do is to actually look at the CompuBots numbers. Right? They're out now. And let's all understand the reality that after 12 rounds, according to CompuBox, Joseph Parker throws 100 more punches than Anthony Joshua and lands more power punches than Anthony Joshua. Right? Joshua has a sizable advantage in terms of number of jabs landed. But understand, Parker's jabs were designed to take away Joshua's right hand. Right? Parker's not leaning into his jabs. Parker is fainting with jabs and throwing the jab just enough to keep Joshua, who has a devastating right hand, from using that right hand. So what you have is a fight where, in front of more than 80,000 fans, on knockout punchers, Joshua's home field, right? It's Joshua's backyard. Joshua goes into the fight with a 100% KO ratio. You have Joshua unable to throw a meaningful number of right hands, he's hesitant, he's as hesitant as Deontay Wilder was for the first four rounds of the Luis Ortiz match. Right, Joshua is as hesitant as Deontay Wilder was for the opening rounds of the Gerald Washington fight. Right? Just look at the number of punches 
Joshua throws over 12 rounds. Folks, he's a cautious champ who's hesitant. The movement, just like Luis Ortiz's southpaw movement against Wilder, the movement disarmed him. It slowed him down. Dare I say, it took away Joshua's biggest weapon. Going into the fight, let's face it, nobody expected a jabbing contest. You thought there were going to be fireworks in this fight. Instead, you saw a champ in survival mode. Now let's understand that life's political. Let's understand that both sides, the Joshua side and the Joseph Parker side, have hired representatives, right? Promoters, with a vested interest in protecting the public image of their fighters. Right, so of course, Eddie Hearn's going around saying Parker was hesitant. Right, understand the guy who Hearn is calling hesitant landed more power punches than Hearn's fighter and threw a hundred more punches than Hearn's fighter. Right, Joshua was hesitant. Movement destabilizes both Joshua and Wilder. Right, it creates an opening that's huge, that extends beyond the heavyweight division. Right, now let me also say this, and I don't say it lightly. Joshua is what I call a technician. In other words, Joshua, Joshua comes in the ring with a construct. Right? He has a plan A, he has a plan B. If, he, if the other guy does this, he's going to do that. He knows exactly what he wants to do. It's kind of like a machine, right? Where technicians are looking for cues and then they're just following a script, right? If this happens, I'll make sure that happens. Right? I'll stand in this stance. If he comes over here, I'll throw these punches, etc. Now, that style is vulnerable. Right? It's vulnerable. Don't get me wrong. Technicians are among the absolute best in boxing. But that style is vulnerable to, we'll call it a Roy Jones type fighter. Right? A guy who decides his game is going to be unpredictable, right? A guy who can flip the script, who can lead with power shots, who doesn't allow the technician to recognize the pattern. Now, I'm going to throw out some names and some concepts here. Yes, I understand. I disagree with many of you. Reading through the comments in the post-fight video, I noticed that a lot of longtime subscribers who I, uh, whose opinions I've admired for years, Brother Monzon comes to mind, right, came out and said, hey, I only had Joseph Parker winning two or three rounds. In other words, my scorecard match the 9-3 that two judges had. That's how you get a six-round margin, right? And for some of you, it matched a 10-2 scorecard, right? Because there's an eight-round margin, a 119-111. Now, all I can say is I didn't see that fight at all. Right, being as charitable as I can be, several of the rounds, several of the rounds are unclear. 
right? They're unclear. That's being charitable. I actually thought the fact that Parker is landing very meaningful body punches, that by the way, Joshua hasn't figured out how to block, right, at this point. In other words, the paradigm he has, the technique he has, he needs to figure out how to block the body shots. He's going to have a hard time doing so, folks, because he moves like a big man, right? You know he's 6'6 by his movement. He doesn't move fluidly, right? Parker moved much better than him, right? But, but just understand... Parker takes away Joshua's big weapon. Joshua loses his right hand entirely. I'm hearing now Joshua saying that he hurt his right hand in the third round. Right? He has to say so because without a right hand injury, this performance is a mind blowing underperformance by a prohibited favorite fighting at home. Right? So understand when I'm watching a slow round and one guy's completely taken out of his game by another guy who's fainting jabs, that's why you have the high miss rate on Parker's jabs because a lot of Parker's jabs weren't intended to land. They accomplished their goal by just taking away Joshua's right hand. So at this point, from where I sit, the question is not whether Anthony Joshua is the best heavyweight in the world, right? We'll find that out as Joshua continues to fight tough opponents. Joseph Parker is an A-level opponent. Vladimir Klitschko is an A-level opponent, right? Joshua is certainly putting himself at risk in the ring. But for me, the question is whether Joshua is the best heavyweight in the United Kingdom. I believe it's that murky. You want to get deeper than that? Folks, you have a heavyweight division with very entertaining fighters who have flaws, right? I'm sorry, any fighter fighting at home in front of a guy who's in front of him should throw more punches than Joshua threw, should throw more right hands than Joshua threw. Just like you watch Deontay Wilder <coughs> against Luis Ortiz and I didn't give Wilder any of the first four rounds in that fight. Right, One of the problems we have here is bad scoring in these matches. If you're seeing the opening of Joshua Parker and Joshua's doing next to nothing, how is he winning those rounds on the scorecards? How's Deontay Wilder winning early rounds on the scorecards against Luis Ortiz when he's doing next to nothing? Right? I'll agree with Paulie Malinaji, who, as the Parker Joshua fight was going forward. Openly said, look, it's very hard to win on the scorecards on the road on your back foot. I agree with that. The point, though, is that Parker was fighting a bigger man who could not successfully throw right hands. He was fighting a knockout puncher who was reduced to being a jabber and who could not match the number of punches thrown by Parker or the number of power punches landed by Parker. Think it through. So, in the United Kingdom, let's get the levels of talent right here. Tyson Fury fought Vladimir Klitschko. It's not close. Fury's using movement, the kind of game Fury throws at Vladimir Klitschko is exactly the kind of movement that paralyzes an Anthony Joshua. Now let's be clear on Fury. 
Fury has some mental health concerns, right? They might not go away. Understand, you can take medication and things like that. But they don't just say, hey, you know what? Whatever condition you have, bipolar disorder, I don't know if that's what Fury has, but let's say it's bipolar disorder, you don't get magically cured of that. Right? Some people close to me have bipolar disorder. Right? You don't wake up one day and say, hey, I'm cured. It's not a headache that goes away. It's not the cold that heals himself. Right? No, it, this is different. Also, Fury has been out of the ring. But I need to have people understand the talent level Fury has. You just saw Luis Ortiz, Southpaw, completely baffle Deontay Wilder for several rounds. Again, the first four rounds of that fight, think about it. Wilder has KO'd every man he's faced, right? Stavern goes the distance the first time, doesn't make it out of this first round a second time. Right? Just like Joshua, Wilder has an inordinate number of early chaos. And you're telling me this guy with one of history's highest early KO ratios is completely lackluster, completely neutralized by Ortiz's southpaw stance. Tyson Fury can fight Southpaw. Understand the angles change. Anthony Joshua's most successful punch against Joseph Parker, who does get cut in the fight from an elbow, think about it, not even a jab, was Joshua's jab. Does Joshua even land that jab against Tyson Fury coming at him from a southpaw stance. Let's go one step further. Roy Jones himself jokes about how British heavyweight, and I know this guy is older, but Roy Jones jokes that David Hay stole his style. Now, Hay is different than Joshua. Joshua is a technician. Hay is an opportunist, right? Hay will lead with power shots. I've said this for years. David Hay is one of the hardest punchers pound for pound in boxing. You're kidding yourself. If you don't think David Hay has the power to drop Joshua for a full count, all you have to do is look at Hay against Derek Chisora. Folks, if you look at the slow motion highlights of that fight, Hay's power is scary. And unlike Joshua, who's coming in with really a computer program type of game plan, where he's in a stance, right? Joshua's fundamentally brilliant. He's in a stance, he's shooting a jab, he's tight and stuff like that. David Hay comes in loose. Understand, David Hay is not processing stuff where he thinks, oh, he's standing here, let me go to plan B, let me go to... No, David Hay sees an opening, he can just fake come in with power shots. David Hay is a disruptor. David Hay also, when he wants to be, can move. Now, I'll agree. Right? Age is a tough thing. The last fight I saw David Hay in, he had one leg after a few rounds. We're going to have to gauge David Hay's Achilles in his fight against Tony Bellew, the rematch. right? I believe David Hay, with two good Achilles, destroys Tony Bellew. Right? If Joshua wants to go up against a guy who himself is proven box office in a big dust-up in the U.K., 
a guy who he hasn't fought before, and he's fought Dylan White before. I'm just telling you that David Hay, who went the distance with Vladimir Klitschko, David Hay style-wise would be a dangerous opponent for him. But understand, there are a host of other guys. What I want people to do is to consider the idea that while the guys at heavyweight are entertaining, the situation at cruiserweight right now is scary. Because you have some of the best fighters pound for pound in the sport at cruiserweight. And understand, these guys can move. You think Joseph Parker moved against Anthony Joshua. I'm just telling you, you have a whole group of people folks haven't thought of who are lighter and who, looking at the tape, have to realize that their movement would paralyze Anthony Joshua. Understand, Manuel Char is currently the WBA heavyweight champion. Maris Breedis already knocked him out cold, folks. Breedis is the guy who lost to Usyk, right, in the WBSS. I know to many it's going to sound crazy, right, against the much bigger Joseph Parker compared to Breedis. Right? Parker was a 5-1 to one something underdog going up against Joshua. Could you imagine the odds you would get with Maris Breedis against Anthony Joshua? Folks, <laughs> let's hope I get the opportunity to bet on that fight. Joshua is so rehearsed tentative and robotic and he was so paralyzed by Joseph Parker's movement that one wonders if he would even be able to find Maris Breedis in the ring. What I want people to do is to look at the Manuel Char Breedis fight that Breedis wins by stoppage. Right? Understand speed kills. If you're so fast that you're able to catch a guy when he's unprepared and cold. You can knock him out cold. Let's go one step further. The championship in the WBSS. The championship is Gassiev against Usyk. Folks, Gassiev isn't bashful throwing punches. Gassiev is brutal on the inside. He's one of boxing's best power punchers. The word tentative doesn't come to mind when you think of Murat Gassiev. Whoever wins the Usyk fight, whoever wins the Usyk fight, Usyk or Gassiev, right? Both the winner and the loser would give Anthony Joshua all he could handle. I'll just say this. Because the casinos mispriced Joshua against Parker, right? A fight that goes a distance where Parker lands more power punches than, than Joshua. Think about that. Right? Don't get fooled by the bad scoring. Let's, let's paraphrase that old Colt 45 saying, right? They, they used to say, don't let the smooth taste fool you. Don't let the bad scoring in this Joshua fight fool you. Right? Joshua, it's an underperformance. Right? Throws fewer punches than his opponent. Can't get off right hands. Doesn't land as many power shots as his opponent. I'm just telling you, the odds for a Gassiev Joshua fight would be so lopsided that it's clear that Gassiev would be the value play in the fight. Whoever you think is going to win. Right? It's also clear 
that Maris Breedis would be the value play from the casino in any fight against Joshua. What's unclear is how Joshua would be able to handle Breedis' movement and timing or Murat Gassiev's aggression and body shots. Well, let's go one step further. While those two guys are value plays, I'm just telling you I would pick Oleksandr Usyk outright to beat Anthony Joshua. Joshua is just not ready for that talent level, right? Usyk's a guy who can fight you a myriad of ways. Usyk would be able to duplicate Joseph Parker's performance, and assuming you had a ref who understood that his job was actually to allow a fight to happen, not to prevent a fight from happening. I'm guessing Usyk would be better than Joshua on the inside, far more fluid and faster than Joshua on the outside. Let's just say tentative, rehearsed, structured, Anthony Joshua would have a very hard time dealing with Alexander Usyk. Let me name another guy. He actually fought the night Joshua fought. He was the fight right before Joshua. Understand one of Joshua's mandatories now is Alexander Povetkin. Now Povetkin was fighting a guy who even Eddie Hearn admits dropped Joshua in sparring. That's David Price. Price hits like a mule. I agree, sparring's not quite the same as being in the ring during a regular fight. But what I want people to do is to understand, Joshua 6'6 has a hard time defending his body. Folks, he gets hit with some hard body shots late. What I want you to do, now I was here online and I pointed out that even I gave Joshua the later rounds. Right? But I'm just telling you, in those rounds, Parker gets off some right hands that land flush. Right? A shorter guy gives Joshua, who doesn't bend well and doesn't move well, right? He's 6'6. He moves like a 6'6 guy. Right? Joshua has a hard time blocking body shots. If you don't realize that, just understand many of the power shots landed by Joseph Parker, who ends the fight with the power shot advantage, are body punches. And understand, Parker was hindered in going after Joshua's body by the referee. Now, Alexander Povetkin just took out David Price. The knockout is brutal. But more importantly, Povetkin 6'2". He's an athlete. He's kind of like David Hay. Doesn't hit as hard as Hay. But he's kind of like David Hay. And understand, even against David Price... Provetkin's able to lower his head, come in low, and land shots to the body. Right? It's going to be very hard, very hard, for Joshua to hold on to all of his belts. It's going to be very hard for anybody to become the undisputed heavyweight champion. Because these sanctioning bodies are going to have their own sets of mandatory challengers. And the problem is whether it's Joshua or Deontay Wilder, right? These big guys are going to have issues. They're going to have issues, quite frankly, against these more mobile guys who can get low, who've looked at the tape, who realize that they could take away both Joshua and Wilder's right hands. Let me also say this too, and I don't say it lightly, going into this fight, 
You know, I thought there was a chance that Joshua might surprise me. I think very highly of Joseph Parker. I think Parker's going to make a comeback that's going to surprise a lot of people. Right? Quite frankly, I thought Parker won the fight. I gave Parker the early rounds. Fight starts to get a little competitive in the middle of the fight. Right? Then I gave Parker some additional rounds before Joshua made a bit of a comeback, but I still had Parker winning the fight. Right now, let me just say, these champs are going to have to pick and choose their battles. Right? Because of the issues they have. The public doesn't quite understand how big guys like Murat Gassiev, cruiserweight, are, right? Or how big Usyk is. These guys are huge by traditional cruiserweight standards. Nor does the public seem to sense that Manuel Char, who beat Ustinov, is very tough against certain styles. He has a share of the heavyweight belt for a reason. Rather, we're hearing about guys who are flawed, like Jarrell Miller, who I believe would get destroyed by Anthony Joshua. Right? So, I'll just say this. I thought going into this fight, Joshua might show me something that might convince me that he'd be able to beat Deontay Wilder. He didn't show me that. Let's remember, Ortiz Southpaw. That's one of the reasons why I took Ortiz against Wilder. Right? Wilder wouldn't be able to land his jab against a Southpaw, a slick Southpaw guy, like he could against a righty which is what Joshua is. Because Joshua is so robotic, and because Wilder is, in my opinion, a better athlete than Joshua, moves better, right? I don't see why, and I'll just throw this out to the public, I don't see why Joshua can't, excuse me, why Wilder can't combine some movement, and I'll agree, Wilder's predominantly flat footy he doesn't really get up on the toes of his feet too much. But Wilder might be able to fight Joshua like he fought Stavern the first time. Move just enough. Have his stick. Have his jab. Keeping Joshua home just like Joseph Parker had his jab. Just the fainting of a jab. Keeping Joshua tentative. And understand, Wilder... Right? If Joshua lunges at him, Wilder has more ring coverage, can hit you from farther distances with his right hand, and has figured out how to throw that right hand under more duress than does Anthony Joshua. In other words, Wilder can hit you with the right hand even when it's raining. I'm not sure if Anthony Joshua can. Right? But Wilder is too unorthodox for me to believe that his game wouldn't fall apart against an Usyk or a Breedis, right? Or a Tyson Fury, if Tyson Fury can shake off the rust, right? One of the challenges facing Fury is unlike Joshua, who's always in shape. Unlike Wilder, who's always in shape. Tyson Fury balloons between fights. So to sum up, since I'm over 30 minutes, you have some champions with some dazzling knockout percentages and some dazzling records, unbeaten records. Anthony Joshua and Deontay Wilder. In my opinion, they're both vulnerable. 
right? Don't be surprised if guys who look like they were on their way to retirement, right? Vladimir Klitschko, David Hay, right? I'm sure these guys have said, babe, I'm home. I'm, you know, David Hay's probably saying, hey, look, I'm just going to take care of Tony Bellu. You already know that I'm in the management promotional game, right? You know, I'm, I'm ending my career. I don't need the spotlight on me. I'm sure they're looking at the Parker tape. They're looking at the crowd that Joshua has bought into the heavyweight division. And they're thinking, look, I can beat this guy. Not only is he not unbeatable, he's flawed. He can be paralyzed. His right hand, his best weapon, can be taken away. He's vulnerable to the body. In fact, the opponent he just fought landed more power shots over 12 rounds than he did in a fight that farcically was scored for a six round scoring gap, six and eight round scoring gap, right? So think speed, think movement. Think guys who could switch to lefty, neutralize a jab, right? I would say there are more than a handful of guys right now who could give Joshua and Wilder a run for the money. Understand, too, Joseph Parker and Luis Ortiz remain in the mix, right? I'm not sure if those guys are granted rematches. And the fight has a competent ref, right? I'm not sure if both of those guys lose again. So it's a jump ball in the heavyweight division right now. Again, don't let the bad scoring fool you. Don't let the clever promotional efforts. You know, promoters saying, oh, the other guy was in survival mode, right? Right? A survival mode that had the other guy throwing more than a hundred more punches than the promoter's own fighter. Right? Don't let clever promote don't let clever promoting hide the ball on you. Right? Unified is not undisputed. There are other guys out there at heavyweight. Hell, they're tough opponents at cruiserweight right now. I'm expecting a cruiserweight invasion of the heavyweight division, right? They might find as they get on the battlefield that there isn't as much artillery at heavyweight as we thought, right? The guys in power aren't invincible. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section to this video. Thanks for stopping by.